All right, well, today we are back to work on the car hauler RV bus conversion. We've got some more upgrades planned for this thing and some repairs, and we're gonna try to test them all out once we're done. So we've been chipping away at this thing, and the time that we've had it, we've come up with a bit of a list of things we wanna upgrade, things that need to be fixed, all that good stuff, and we've just been tackling them one by one. So the first set of projects is gonna be on the inside here. Our last set of upgrades are very helpful. As you can see, it's dark in here, and we got some light. So we're gonna start in the living quarters here. So one of the biggest things we need to tackle for a race weekend is entertainment. We're gonna be working on our infotainment system here, if you could even call it that. So this is a 1989 Eagle bus. So the bus was built in 89, but the retrofit, the outfitting was done in 2005. So the technology is not completely dated, but it's pretty dated, you know? It's all it's all pretty dated. If you look up here, we've got a 101 disc CD changer, <laughs> uh, which nobody uses CDs anymore. We've got a DVD and VHS player, which I do want to retain this because I don't even know if I own another DVD player. And we've got a bunch of DVDs in here, including, you know, Pulp Fiction, one of my favorite movies. We've got, we've got some good movie selections here. So we want to retain this. However, the TV. TV is really the biggest thing. One, it's not displaying a picture right now, which when we start to take it apart, we could potentially figure out why and fix it. But with technology, we now have smart TVs that we can connect to Ab. So I want to replace this TV and speaker system with a more modern equivalent. So we basically got to rip this apart, see what's going on in there and uh, start upgrading it. Fortunately, all these projects are inside. Um, so daylight's not really an issue, but I do have one project I'm going to tackle on the outside that uh, we need some daylight for ideally. So if you didn't see the last episode of Upgrades, we added these cabinet lights and set them up to where they come on automatically when you latch the, uh, the door here. Now the downside is if it's daylight, you've got to go in here and manually turn off each of these lights. Now the original plan was only to have one light, so you're only turning off one light if you're going to leave the cabinet open. But now that we switch the plan midway through to two lights, that becomes a bit more of a nuisance. So we're gonna fix that by adding a main switch to cut off all the lights. So we don't have some cabinets with the lights on, some cabinets with them off. It'll just be a little bit easier that way. So put our switch in this cabinet since this is where all the electrical stuff is. Basically put it in line with this power going out to all of the lights, aside from these two. So these two you'd still have to turn off, but that's okay because this is the panel you're gonna be coming into to turn the rest of them off. Got some light up switches. Oh, where do I want to put this? Oh no, down here. This is where I wanted it. So when you're drilling through thin material like this, a step bit is your best friend, as opposed to having to switch through multiple drill bit sizes. So we blasted a hole real quick into this. I, I may or may not have drilled it almost a little too big, but it worked, so we're all good. Now, the only downside to a light up switch like this is the switch needs power and ground for the light in the switch to work. So instead of having two wires where you're just breaking the connection between the two, you have a third wire to ground, assuming that you have power running through the switch, and that lights up the bulb. So so we had to do that. We had to modify our power wires a little bit and then we're good to go. All right, time to test it out. Put the fuse back in. Switch is off. I believe it's off. I don't know which way is which. Yeah, there we go. And it's got its own LED. So that way you can see if you peek in here that it's on. That way, you know, if it's daytime, sometimes it's kind of hard to tell if lights are on. But yeah, so the switch has to be on and you have to open and latch the door for the lights to come on. If it's uh, daylight and we plan on leaving the cabinets open, we just come in here and flick the switch. Easy enough. Sweet. All right, now we can move back inside. I just wanted to get that taken care of. It was gonna bother me until I did it. So let's move on. All right, so it's time to go ahead and pull this TV out. So to give ourselves some more room, we might as well put the slide out out, because why not, you know? Oh, dude, that opens up so much room. I can never get over it. I'm wondering, oh, I think probably this panel. That's my first attack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. Take that panel out and then 
We can maybe get to this. Get stuff. behind those. Anyway. So we dove into the task of pulling this TV out. It's hard because, you know, when you make stuff like this, you want to make it look as seamless as possible. You don't want to see the hardware to remove it, but if you're not the one who made it, it's kind of tricky to determine what hardware you've got to, what has to come out first. But fortunately, we got this old TV out of the way. I wouldn't be opposed to keeping the old TV, but it just doesn't make sense. And then I made sure that the stereo system still worked, and then we tore further into it. Dude, we're in, in, in there. Yeah. Oh. Into the thick of it. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> so while we had everything apart, I wanted to also inspect this AC ducting. So you can flip basically a, a door closed on the front AC unit and it'll blow the air through these vents and down into the driver area. So I wanted to make sure we didn't have anything crazy leaking back here that would hurt the performance of the AC. And then we just continued on tearing this thing apart. Freaking control center. Oh, we get it. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> what is going on? Oh, dude, right, dude. Oh, I see. So the VCR thing would come into here, and then this would transmit the signal out to the TV. Ch channel or whatever it was supposed to go. Right. Was impossible. Well, but we also remember we got it working, but it just wouldn't. It would play the soundtrack, but it wouldn't show any video. Boom. Another one bites the dust. All the. Uh... Right, look at all that antiquated technology. Relics. <clears throat> Take that to a garage sale. That's pioneer, that's, that's good stuff. So at this point, we were pretty committed. There's no turning back. Now my original plan here was to kind of leave all the old stuff as placeholders if we didn't need the space for something else, but as we got in here, there's just so many wires and panels and things. We just decided to rip everything out that we no longer need and replace it all and then figure out what to do with the rest of the space. We're gonna have a significant amount of leftover room. So Josue was working on pulling out all of the old unneeded wires and I was trying to do some maths to figure out what size TV would fit in here. This opening is a little bit too wide for a TV to completely fill it. So I'm trying to determine the, the closest size I can get to fill as much of it as possible. Obviously, the bigger the TV is, the uh, bigger the TV is, but also it'll fill more of the gap and we won't have to make as big of trim panels. So we got all the stuff out from up top and then started working on all of the stuff that was hanging down underneath this old camera system, the DVR player, the direct TV satellite controller. There's so much stuff in here. And we're never going to use any of it. Now, we're going to have to determine what to do with the open holes, but I'd rather that than have a bunch of stuff that we're not using in here. So we just went to town pulling all this stuff out, and as much as I don't know what we're going to do with the uh, space, it's satisfying. All right, here is everything we've pulled out so far. So we've got this RCA splitter box. We've got the DirecTV dealio here. We've got this thing, which is like the control box for the TV. Then we've got the, uh, this, which was the control panel for the cameras. This, which was the display for the cameras. Basically, one of the cables went up here, and then you would select down there which uh, camera you wanted to view, and it would show up on this screen, and it has a DVD player. <laughs> uh, the 100 disc changer, um, and the DVD player, VHS player, which that we are keeping. And then also all of this wiring here. It feels like they just kind of added and added over the years and never removed anything <laughs> when they added new stuff. So that's just the start of what we've taken out just with these deals here. Uh, it's not our style to just leave it, leave it all janky like that. No. Too much spaghetti. Um, so from here, all we have left is this and the DVD player. Mm -hmm. So I measured and it looks like the DVD player will fit above the amp here which would be kind of perfect because then we would have this whole area to make some sort of little cubby instead of having them split up. TV's gonna go here, obviously. Um, and that's kind of the rough game plan for up here. It's really all we need, but we're making some progress. All right, well, it's raining. I had to go ahead and pull the slide out in just because uh, it's getting kind of sketchy out there. Typical Florida doing Florida things, but the TV showed up. So I wanna go ahead and try to get that tossed up here and uh, see how it looks, see if I got my sizing right. I also got this HDMI splitter. There was, oh, <laughs> bottom of that, I was about to cut the bag open. With this, we should be able to connect our DVD player to our new TV, hopefully. That's the idea, at least. I gotta say, with the rain, it's, I think this is only the second time I've been in the bus with the rain. It's, uh, 
It's kind of cozy in here. I got my shoes off because my shoes were dirty. And we just cleaned the bus the other day. I love this thing. I really do. You know, there's downsides to it. Is it the most logical tow rig? Probably not. Definitely not. Is it cool though? Does it make me happy? Absolutely. That's really what matters. You know, a lot of people try to justify their decisions on vehicles and stuff. And, you know, at the end of the day, you can just have something just because you like it. And you think it's cool and it makes you happy. It doesn't always have to be logical. A lot of times we put too much effort into trying to convince ourselves and others that it's the smartest choice, and that's why we did it. It doesn't necessarily have to be smart. Oh, this is light. Oh, yeah. That's literally on the money because this panel will take up that extra bit of space. And then the frame right above this lip here. So, you know, obviously it'd be, it would have been nice if we, if, if it could have been a little wider, we're gonna have to make a little fill panel here. But aside from that, it's pretty much perfect. You know, the, the mounting points are in the middle of the TV, so I have to make a pretty long bracket and right. Ooh, it's gonna be nice. I had first time taking a step back. Let me let me let me walk back here, pretend like I'm chilling on the couch. Oh yeah. Oh that's good. I've also got a HDMI to USB C cable that I can hook my laptop up to the TV. So during an event we could put the footage on my laptop and play it on the screen. Yeah, sick. I'm stoked on that. So after taking some measurements, I got to work on the bracket. The trickiest part here is the bus is not in the shop. Normally you can kind of walk back and forth if you have a question on a measurement or aren't sure or want to check something. Uh, we don't really have that option. It's raining, it's muddy. We're trying to minimize the trips from the shop back to the bus. So I tried to take as many measurements as I could and hopefully we get this right for a try and we don't have to walk back and forth a million times. So I got the bar cut to shape. I got it cleaned up on the belt grinder because can't have a a janky looking bar in there even though you're absolutely not going to see it and then i got to work on drilling my holes so we've got to drill our center holes to mount it to the tv i decided to just use the one inch flat bar and the one set of mounting holes because i i think it'll be more than strong enough we're gonna use some insulation and stuff to kind of keep the tv tucked tight in there this is just literally to fix it in place and make sure it doesn't fall out on our heads while we're driving down the road so I got the bar cut, bent, everything, it's ready to go. We've just got to drill our holes. We are going to have to countersink these holes as well, but pretty straightforward. Boom. Do the same to the other side, and then we can dry it out. Also, I talk about this every time I'm drilling just about, but drill slow when you're drilling through steel, and you will drill fast. Having good sharp bits helps a lot. Put these holes a little too close together. This is why you measure. I've done this twice lately. I just eyeballed my holes. And it's bit me a little bit, but it's okay. Nice quick and dirty little TV bracket. Satisfying. Let's see if this, this one might be a little too long. I added a little kick to my bracket. It's like sixteenth of an inch too wide. It's a little tight, but oh no, it's like perfect, really. I mean, that should work. I mean, check it out, dude. We got a TV. If you're chilling on the couch back here. Boom, watching a show, watching drift footage from the event off the laptop. This is sick. <laughs> it's so satisfying. TV's so much bigger than the other one, and we get rid of all that ancillary stuff that we don't need anymore. So, hell yeah, sick. Well, we still need to pull it back out so uh, we can hook everything up. So once we knew the proof of concept on the mount was good and that it worked, it was time to take it back out. This is one thing with fab work, no matter what you're fabricating on, there's a lot of taking things in, taking them back out, putting them on, taking them off. 
But once we knew it was going to work, I went ahead and started working on hooking up everything, the DVD player cables, the cable for the laptop. I want to make sure that's in there, all of that good stuff. And then I went ahead and threw a strip of insulation on the bottom to help kind of keep it nice and tight, keep it from wobbling around and also kind of protect it from vibrations when we're going down the road. All right, well, it updated like three times and then updated the apps, but we finally got the TV working. Pretty uh, stoked on this, man. Look at that. We got YouTube pulled up. Man, it looks so sick. Look at that. You take a step back. Oh, I'm so stoked. It's so cool to have a nice TV in here where we can watch what we want. We can watch YouTube videos. We can pull up footage from the track. Like, so freaking cool. Just look at it. Ah, oh, so sick. So I haven't got the audio playing out to this yet. I have this HDMI cord I hooked up, but it doesn't want to work. I don't think this is a problem. I think the TV is just not default outputting sound there. I'll mess with it some more. We got to get this working. All right, well, we got it working. I made some changes to the way I mounted the TV. I basically put three layers of the foam strips to get the IR sensor up high enough, and then I put one up top here, which you won't see once that cover panel's on, but it keeps the TV nice and snug and now we can use the remote like a normal tv so right now it's just playing out of these two speakers because this isn't out once this goes out it plays out of all four but we've basically got surround sound i mean we can sit back here oh that's so cool can you hear the audio this is better than my home tv setup <laughs> in the bus how sick is that oh the size of the tv is great Sitting back here, you're chilling. Right, well, we're on our way. Wow, this is wild. Sick. So yeah, TV is mounted, TV works. Uh, audio setup works now. So that's done, that was a big thing. I absolutely wanted to make that work. Now let's see if we can get the DVD player working. DVD VCR out. Oh yeah, there we go, all right. Not using the VCR source. There we go. There we go. All right. We're getting somewhere. Okay, the audio is not working. So we need to figure out. It's working! Ha <laughs> ha! That's so exciting! Ha <laughs> ha! Let's go! We don't even need internet to be entertained while we're on the bus. Ah! <laughs> oh, it's so cool! I'm definitely spending a night in the bus just for fun, just to watch old DVDs. All right, well, sick. That is incredibly exciting. So now we've got really all of the electronics taken care of. We've got our DVD VHS player working, we've got our audio system working, and we have our new TV. Boom, there's all our remotes. So that's all sorted. That's done. Uh, very satisfying. So basically what's next is we need to come up with some sort of trim for here And then we need to figure out what to do with all this all, all this room we have now for activities All right Well, I have decided finally on a cubby the original plan. We're gonna stick with it uh, There's nothing else that we really need to put up there electronically and this will give us a nice good open storage area You can always use more storage on uh, something like this now I was torn on whether I wanted to make it out of plywood or aluminum sheet. I'd have more fun making it out of a, a sheet of aluminum, but it, it, there's downsides and upsides to both. So I decided we're going to use both. We'll get the best of both worlds as far as mounting it and the, the spatial constraints that we have to keep it all looking clean and uniform and as if it was meant to be there. That'll make more sense once we uh, get it together. You'll see what I mean. But that being said, I've got my measurements here. All we need to do is cut our wood, cut our aluminum sheet, and put it all together. So you know the deal. Enough jibber jabber, let's get back to work.
So this is something new that I've got. We finally have a drill press. Those people have been telling me for years I need a drill press. We finally have one, kind of. It's a mag drill. So what this does is basically, we've got this big electromagnet down here in the bottom. So with it on, but with it off. So we turn that on, we've got variable speed, zero to 10, which is a really nice feature over a standard drill pass with like a belt drive gearbox. It becomes too long. This is meant for you to, you know, stick it to a piece of big red iron and drill your holes through, which is not really what we're using it for. But we have the option to use it for that if we need to, which is why I went this route over a standard drill press all in one. That was my idea at least. So we need to drill holes in the perimeter of this, our aluminum panels, because we're gonna be drilling them in with wood screws and we need to countersink them at least a little bit, kind of like we did on the TV mount. So probably before we do that, we should build the box and uh, make sure our dimensions are right. So I started working on drilling out these holes and this is my first time really using this besides tinkering with it when I set it up and got put together this base setup for it and uh, wow, what a, what a difference. I should have got a drill press a long time ago. This is very satisfying. I can't wait to do more projects with it. So we got the perimeter hole drilled and then went back with the countersink to A, clean up the holes again and then B, actually countersink them for the wood screws so they sit nice and flush and everything. Nice and clean and uniform. That's always the goal. Keep things clean, keep things simple, keep things semi-professional looking. Whew, stoked on that. And there we have a box. <laughs> All right, so we've got this USB hub for charging things. We're gonna tuck it, you know, kind of as far back here as we can. All right, now we need a hole for our light. These are pretty nifty for when you don't want to have to whip out a car battery in the power probe. A little, a little dim in there. Ah, oh, man, it's gonna look cool once we get all those lights in. So with the lights installed in the box, the last thing to do was just to secure up the wires some. I can't have them dangling around and I wanted something that would hang on there. So I had these little Christmas tree zip tie combos so you can basically stick it into a hole and it'll hold itself there and then you can zip tie it to that so it'll hold the wires tucked up nice in place. And with that done, the lights are pretty well wrapped up on the inside. We need to go ahead and get our little charger port mounted, get that done and dusted. And then I wanna go ahead and clean and prep this wiring coming out of the box for the lights so that way that's all ready to go and we don't have to do it in the bus while we're cramped and everything's tight and compacted. So I went ahead and wrapped it with some Tessa tape. I love using this stuff for a simple project where you just need to loom up some wires and then heat shrunk some connectors on there so it is ready to go. It's basically stubbed out. All you gotta do is hook it up in the bus. So then it was time to get this thing installed in the bus and see what it looks like. So I got it put into place. It just fits, so we got our measurements right. So now we just need to screw it in place and uh, that's done and dusted. Mint, just gotta vacuum those chips out, but it's more or less what it's gonna look like. We just need something for here. And then our entertainment system upgrade is complete. All right, well, I think I found my TV border pieces. These are about the right size. We'll have to trim them down. 
The tricky thing here is these need to go in after the TV. So it has to be TV first, then these. You can't get the TV out with these in the way. I think I've got a good plan on how to mount them in a way that we can get them out without taking the TV out. But before we get into that, we have a bit of a side project. The Fummins is back because we're putting the finishing touches on it before the giveaway winner picks it up. He is on the way here. So we're tidying up. We did basically a full fluids change. We're wrapping up the diff right now. We uh, tinted the windows, retinted the windows. The tint on the windows is terrible for years. Typical, you know, you're getting rid of something. You finally take the time to do all the things you've wanted to do for years. But retinted the windows, had it detailed, all that good stuff. Just making sure it's tip top or it's new owner. But he should be here soon. I'm pretty excited. As much as I thought I would be really sad that it's going, I am, but more than that, I'm excited to see, to, to give it a new lease on life, you know? When we got to call him, so the way it works is we use a sweepstakes company, a third party, to handle all the legal side and handle the drawings. They did the drawing, they called him to make sure he's eligible, and once all that was confirmed, then we called him. Uh, but to hear his excitement when we called him, because he didn't even believe it was real until we called him, uh, was, was such a cool feeling. Hey, it's Taylor Ray. What's up, dude? Hey, I just wanted to call and say congrats. Congrats. Dude, congrats. it is real. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's, it's congrats. Real. It's real. Crap, dude. dude, I've been following you for so freaking long. I watched the whole Fummins build and everything. And huh. literally, I had talked to my uncle about it earlier today because I got the email from the Sweet Steaks company and stuff like that. And right. He's like, there's there's no way that's happening. I'm like, well, <laughs> it is until Taylor calls. <laughs> True. <laughs> This is just so surreal and so wild. And so anyway, I'm excited for the truck. For someone to enjoy the truck like I did when I first got it done, you know? Um, as much as I'm sad to see it go, I am excited for it to have, you know, a new life. So that being said, he's on his way. We're wrapping up. We're going to get the diff tidied up, and we're going to go fill it up with diesel, and then he should be here. Yeah. It's so, so <laughs> It chops. It chops way better than the other one. Yeah, it's sick. It's not as loud in person. Yeah, it's not too loud. Yeah. We got family dinner tonight. Maybe I'll just take this to family dinner. There you go. Yeah. Maybe it's a, I'll, after dinner, I'll go hook the trailer up and bring it to work tomorrow. Yeah, there you go. I'll check on the car before Saturday. So there you go. <laughs> That'll be hilarious. We're going to find an excuse to drive. All right, well, the Fummins is driven out of the driveway for the final time. Uh, definitely bittersweet is probably the best word uh, term to describe it, you know? So anyway, I'm Jibber Jabberin'. Fummins is off to a new home. So that being said, we gotta get back to work. Gotta finish this bus project. I'm so eager to see this finished up, clean up all my tools and, and see the finished product. So uh, I've got my measurements, my dimensions. I need to cut these down, test fit them, mount them. All that goes well. Make them look nice. We're either going to paint them or wrap them. I don't know which, depending on how I'm feeling. But first things first, we got to get them cut to shape. So let's get back to work. So after getting them cut to shape, I went ahead and test fitted them. One was still a little bit too tight and the other one fit pretty much perfectly. You know, we want to keep these as tight as possible because if there's a big gap on one side, it kind of defeats the purpose. So I got them trimmed just right and then I went ahead and painted them for now and started working on tossing them in and getting them mounted. So that's really the trickiest part here. It's like I said in the beginning where you, you want all this stuff to look like there's no way you can take it apart, but then you got to be able to take it apart. So trying to do that is tricky, but we got them in, we got them screwed together, and then it was time to kind of button everything else back up and see what the complete finished product looks like all together. This thing has been taken apart for days now. I'm so ready to see it complete. 
However, this top panel is going to spoil my party, it seems like. I'm trying to get it in, but it is just a little bit too tight up against the TV. The TV either needs to go down or it needs to get trimmed back, one or the other. I think we should just lower the TV down some. All right, well, i got to make a decision on this. I'm not 100% sure which way I want to go. We've either got to trim and recover this, or we got to drop the TV down so that way it tucks up over top of the TV and then trim this little section out or deal with having to walk up here with the remote, which would be annoying. So I'd, I'd like to make this work if we can. Just notch this and try to not completely demolish the fabric. So that being said, though, we have a working smart TV that works with a DVD VHS player that works with the TV and our full surround sound system. Like I said, this setup is better than what I have in my own house, you know? I mean, I just got the TV. I don't have any surround sound, but it's sick. I'm very, very pleased that we have that working with the TV um, because it didn't even work with the TV before. Uh, with the old TV, even if the old TV works. So, uh, nice improvement. Our little box. I've got a little cargo net coming for the front of that. It'll look cool all lit up going down the road. We got to decide what we want to do in this area, all this open space. Um, I want to add CarPlay and a little den and stuff for here. I want to add an amp and a sub in here. Uh, I've also got a bunch of different options for lighting, for ambient lighting inside here, more lighting for in the garage portion. So we still got a bit to do. I was hoping to wrap this part of the project all the way up, but I don't want to hack it up just to get it done. Uh, I want to get the right stuff to, to do this properly and get this all finished. We're close. We're so close to the finish line. And, and seeing the trim panels, I, I want to wrap them too. So anyway, that being said, you see where I'm going with this. We are out of time. So I'm going to go ahead and end it here, uh, but we'll pick this back up. we got plenty more work to do. we just got some other projects we need to jump on in the meantime. So now that is going to be it. So I do want to say thank you for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And that I sure hope I'll get to see you next time. Goodbye.